Don't be a square, man. Be cool. Use square. Wait, I mean square, the awesome payment processor with all those cool uh, iPad-like kiosks that you've probably already seen at all these different little coffee shops all around the country. Uh, maybe even the world, I don't know. I've only seen them in the United States so far as I know, but they're ridiculously ubiquitous, they're great. Uh, and the reason they're great is because they've tried to sort of revitalize and, and just change payment processing for everybody. And in that journey, they've had to build really, really good boss sauce Android and iOS software and really, really good, uh, you know, uh, mobile, you know, point of sale uh, software and just good services, right? Microservices all around. So they've built a pretty interesting stack of stuff. Square has a wonderful HTTP client uh, called OKHTTP, OK uh, but it's, I assure you, contrary to whatever the name may indicate, more than just OK, it's epic. And it works on Android and on the JVM uh, and in Gravium. There's also uh, Retrofit. Retrofit is a high performance type safe HTTP client for Android and Java, neat. Right? Retrofit is a bit like OpenFane. Right? Fane, uh, of course, is well integrated into Spring Cloud via the Spring Cloud OpenFane module. And with Retrofit, you can declaratively build HTTP clients given an interface. Wouldn't it be nice if you could use these tools in a Spring Cloud context and have them work with things like client-side load balancing uh, using the Spring Cloud load balancing abstraction? Well, good news, everybody. Now you can. The Spring Cloud team has finally polished off the code for the original integration of Spring Cloud Square. Uh, and this stuff is awesome, right? I love OpenFane, but uh, it doesn't do great with asynchronous or reactive sort of use cases. So finally, finally, I, I, I'm so glad there's an alternative. Also, by the time you watch this, there's probably going to be a working integration for GraalVM. So you can use Spring Cloud Square and Spring Native to uh, you know, build Spring Boot and Spring Cloud services that run in your GraalVM context. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. All right, so before we can get into Spring Cloud Square, we need to build some supporting infrastructure, the first of which will be a greeting service, all right? So we're gonna call this, and let's just call it greetings. We use the reactive web support, we use Eureka discovery client support, uh, and I think that's it, actually, that's all that we really need. So let's go ahead and hit generate. We'll open this up in our IDE. Okay, so we're gonna open up the greetings class. And here, we're just gonna have a little service, just a very quick little service. Um, we want this to have an endpoint. So, hello name, all right? Just a regular path variable, string greet, path variable string name, return, hello, name from port from localhost colon and we need a port right so I'll, I'll inject that variable in just a second here or define that variable I suppose I should say private final so private private int port and in order to get that port we need an event listener uh, so public void ready uh, we want the web server initialized uh, event so event this dot port equals event dot get web server dot get port. All right, there's that. And this has to be a controller, right? This whole thing has to be a REST controller, of course. And we're gonna register with a service registry. So we'll say spring application uh, name, spring that application name equals greetings. Server dot port will be random, okay. Um, let's just go ahead and spin this up and see what we get. Okay. It's failed because it can't find the service registry, but the service itself should work for now. Localhost 8080. Hello, Spring fans. Whoops. We don't know what port it is, right? <laughs> so we are running on port. Six one one three three. Okay, so there you go. So that's clearly working. So now the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that when we when we do have a, a, a service registry, you know, Eureka or something, uh, that we can we get a unique instance. So I'm gonna say Eureka instance ID 
instance ID, and uh, you know I'm going to use Spring application name, and then random, right? So random UUID. There you are. So that'll just be that way. It'll show up as distinct instances because Eureka only cares about the host name. It doesn't know about the port really. It's not a distinguishing element. So, and, and there's a good reason, right? Most of the time, you're not starting more more than one instance of the same server on the same JVM. Maybe in the same pod with multiple containers, but not in the same JVM. So, or not in the same host, you know. So let's go ahead and run this. So we need to give it a distinguishing key. We're going to make the make it so that from uh, Eureka's perspective, there's multiple instances, even though they're on the same node, the same machine, the same network. Okay, so we don't know what port it on. Port. Alrighty. Six one two one four. Let's just make sure that works. Okay, good. So that's up and running. Now we need a service registry, as you can imagine. So return here. We're going to call this Eureka. We're going to bring in the Eureka server and hit enter. Open this up. All right, there's our Eureka application. Don't have to do all that much here, really, in the Java code. It's just this annotation. There are some configuration bits that we need to care about. First, this needs to be in a well-known port, right? So 8761. We don't want it to register itself with Eureka, so we'll say false. We don't want it to fetch anything, so we're going to say false. Uh, and that's it. Okay, so let's go ahead and spin that up. Okay, so now localhost 8761 gives us our service registry. Eighty-seven sixty-one. You can see there's a service registry. This isn't exactly production grade. I should certainly, spend, you know, you should certainly take care to load balance this and to make sure that they have a, a quorum and all that kind of stuff. You can use, you know, uh, VMware has a platform uh, that you can use. Taz, Tanzu Application Service, that will automatically do this for you. You can use the Azure Spring Cloud uh, platform that's uh, jointly developed by, you know, VMware and Microsoft. That'll have a, a load balance version of this for you. So this is just a demo, but you. You can see what's happening, right? You can. We have a service registry. Now we need to actually build our application that will in turn talk to all this. So we can use the cloud bootstrap. Uh, keep in mind, there's no square support here on the Spring Initializer just yet. So bootstrap will help us get the dependency management for you know the generic foundational stuff for all Spring Cloud libraries. Um, and then all we need to do is to bring in the dependency for Spring Cloud Square itself. We want the Eureka Discovery Client support. We want the uh, web support and you know, I think that's it. That'll do it for us now. Maybe Lumba, just in case, you never know. We'll hit generate and then open this up. Now we want to add the dependency. Uh, like I say, that's not automatically provided for you on the Spring Initializer at the moment. So we'll do it the old-fashioned way, just with our hands. So I'm going to bring in two different dependencies, Spring Cloud Square uh, Retrofit. Okay. And uh, I'm going to say Spring Cloud Square dot version. I'm going to create that property up here. And that version is 0 0.4.0 M1. All right. And uh, with that there, we need we need now to add the uh, OK HTTP support. OK, so OK. HTTP. So now we've got Spring Cloud Square on the class path, and we've got the version, but we also need the dependency management sections that allow us to, to resolve those, because this is not yet a GA project. So let's copy and paste those bits. Here we go. So we got the Spring Snapshots and the Spring Milestones, and we've got our dependencies. Let's force it to reload. All right, everything's on the class path. Let's go to our code and actually start building our, our client to talk to it. So the first thing that we're going to use is the retrofit support, which I think is super interesting, right? So here we'll do a, uh, we're going to create a greetings client, okay? Greetings client, it's just an interface. It's a proxy, an, an uh, implementation of the proxy pattern. 
Make sure that you use the retrofit annotation, so retrofit 2.http, not the uh, spring, the traditional spring MVC ones, and give it a parameter. And here you can return all sorts of different things. One thing that you might want to re return, one thing that you might want to return is a call, which is an asynchronous type. So a string hello, you know, or greet. And we're going to use a path. Not the path variable, but a path for name, string name, all right? So there's this. Okay, so now we want to be able to, this will get turned into an actual implementation once we add the supporting dependencies here. So we're going to give this a name, greetings client, okay? And uh, URL, of course, for now, which instance is already running so that we can test it out. Let's go to the service registry. And uh, you can see that this is on port 61214. So HTTP localhost 61214. And then finally, we're going to use the greetings client here in an application runner. So we'll say greetings client GC, return event, I want to say a 4 var, 4 var uh, i equals 0, i is less than 3, i plus plus gc.greet spring fans var call, okay? Now we can use that call. Uh, we can like enqueue a request like so, new callback, etc. on failure on string, or we can just force it to resolve, kind of like a uh, dot get in the future. So I'll say, give me the body, which is a string, body of result, and I can just print that out. Now, I want to call this service, but the problem is that right now I have the discovery client support on the class path. So I'm going to temporarily remove this so that it functions without service registration and discovery. And I will run it. Okay, so there we go. We got a call, three different calls, no problem. But one, one of the real benefits here is, of course, you get built in. OK HTTP load balancing as well. You can actually have the OK HTTP client that's used behind the scenes. You can have that do load balancing in the same way that you can when you use the uh, the uh, regular load balancer you know, support in the rest of Spring Cloud. So I'm going to go and restore our load balancer support. And we're going to go ahead and uh, change the definition here so that it's not referencing a particular host and port, but instead a particular service. In this case, the greeting service, right? That's what we registered it as, right? Or oh, greetings. It's just called greetings. So, good. Okay, so now we want to run this, but we want to take advantage of load balancing, right? Okay, so now we need to define a, a load balanced uh, client, just like we would for the REST template and the web client. You just say at load balanced. And then you're going to build an OK HTTP client dot builder. OK HTTP client builder. Turn new OK builder. And then we can restart. And there we are. You can see it's load balance requests across different instances. So 61721, 61734, 61214, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And with that, my friends, we've had a very quick look at uh, some of the support in Spring Cloud Square. Like I said, this has been a thing that's been usable. It's kind of been an experimental code base for years. So I'm so happy to, have, to see it get like dusted off, updated, and then made available finally as something that you know we can we can build upon. Right? It's still not yet GA, but uh, I think this is how you get from here to GA as you you know people start using it and feeding back to it. Um, the nice thing about this is that. Unlike Fain, it, this has good support for asynchronous HTTP requests. So, uh, in theory, you could use you know you could use this to do like reactive calls, and in fact, I think you can use it to do, uh, for example, a reactive network call. So, uh, really, really promising. Very, very cool to have that integrated, um, and it's also a, a win for people that are already using OK HTTP. Uh, this is a very popular client in the Android space as well. So, uh, I'm just very happy about that. All right, as usual, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.